Here's an interesting polynomials question. For this x cubed minus kx plus 1 equals 0 polynomial, if it has exactly one root between x equals 0 and x equals 1, then, being that k is some arbitrary constant, explain why 2 minus k must be negative. Now, this is an interesting question because at the beginning you think, where, how do I even start? What kind of way can I approach this? And you might think, well, okay, what information they tell you? Well, there's exactly one root. So that might tempt you to think, oh, it might have something to do with the discriminant. You know, I think uh, for some kinds of functions, if the discriminant is zero, you get exactly one root. Um, but then you would have a problem with that, which is that this is um, a cubic. So you're actually probably thinking of quadratics when this comes into your mind. The discriminant for the cubic is not actually even something that you are um, expected to know. And there's a good reason for that. It's because it's equal to this, um, this long awkward formula based on the coefficients of the um, cubic polynomial. So when you think about this, you're like, okay, this is not a result I'm meant to know. The discriminant is probably not going to help me with this. Okay. Then you might think, well, maybe calculus might be able to help me. Okay. If I differentiate this graph x cubed minus kx plus one, then that's going to give you three x squared minus k. Okay. And when you think about this, it's a, um, the leading coefficient is one. So what kind of cubic is it? Well, if it's got exactly one root, it's going to look either like this. Uh, sorry, this is between it's between zero and one. So scratch that. It might look like this, um, or alternatively, zero and one. It might look like this. Okay. So what conclusions could you draw? Well, the, the derivative is either um, zero or it's positive. So you could say three x squared minus k is greater than or equal to zero. Um, within that domain but that doesn't help you very much either because you've got this K there and you do have an inequality but there's an X in there and you think well what am I going to do with this so you need to scratch your head a little longer and think okay it's not something to do with the discriminant it's not something to do with calculus what else could it be well, this is polynomials and in extension one the other kinds of things you know about polynomials are well you know there's this thing called um, Newton's methods for approximating roots which uses calculus this up above and you also know there's a thing called the bisection method or halving the interval which is um, about the same thing finding or approximating roots so the question is uh, are either of these useful to us and the answer is well they definitely are but the question is which one well you're trying to show that something is negative yes now, which of these um, methods, techniques, algorithms has anything to do with positive or negative? And the answer is it's the bisection method. Uh, if you can't remember, the way the bisection method works is by saying, look, if you have some kind of function, okay, and you know it passes through the axis somewhere, okay, so it has a root there you call it alpha. Well, on the left, if you test out that value, you should get some positive value. And on the right, for this one, you should get some kind of negative value. Or obviously you could have the reverse scenario and it could be doing this. So on the left, you'll have a, a negative value of some kind. And on the right, you'll have a positive value of some kind. Whatever thing you've got, you've got a change in sign before and after uh, where you expect this um, root to be. Okay. So therefore, since I know the question told me that the root is between x equals naught and x equals one, that should have been my clue to say, all right, I can use this. I can take advantage of these two facts here, or one fact with two parts to it, to work out uh, a relationship between um, the roots and this k thing in this positive negative business. Okay, so let's let's pedal back a little bit. Let's um let's give this polynomial name. Let's call it p. It's x cubed minus kx plus one. Okay, and I know that there's a root between zero and one. Okay, so let's see what happens at zero. Well, I'm going to get zero cubed, which is zero, minus k lots of zero, which is zero, plus one, so it's equal to one. Now, what that tells me is that p naught is positive, right? So before the root that I'm expecting, I'm above the axis. So that means after the root, I should be expecting it to be below the axis. I should be expecting this. Right, because that's I know between here and here it passes through the x-axis. So I can say, well, p of one will be less than zero. What is p of one? It's one cubed minus 
um, k lots of sorry this is come back a little bit so that's greater than zero or less than zero okay um, come back to this one cubed minus k lots of one plus one that's less than zero it's negative so that's one minus k plus one which is less than zero and that's the two minus k being negative that we were required to prove okay so in conclusion how do you approach this question you need to really take into account all of the um, information they've given you that there's a root it's between here and here okay and so when you're trying to work out a positive negative value that's a strong inclination that you need to go towards uh, the bisection method or the halving the interval because um, that's what it depends on that method it depends on the positive negative transition that happens before and after a route.